Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name's Steve, and today we are going to be upgrading this PRS SE model to try to get closer to their high-end core models. So let's get going. One of the reasons I started this channel is I just have a love of all things music. I love guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, recording equipment. The downside of that is it's very hard to afford the very best in all of those categories. As far as guitars go, I have quite a few guitars. What I didn't currently have in my collection was a single cut with a hardtail bridge. Now my dream single cut guitar would be a PRS Tremonti which is the signature guitar for Mark Tremonti from the band Creed and Ultra Bridge. And that guitar in the nicest finish is about $5,000. I can't afford $5,000 for another guitar, especially with all my other interests. So what I've decided to do was buy one of PRS's lower models and do a bunch of upgrades to it to try to get close to that. Now, I know a bunch of people are going to say, you're not going to be able to get there because they use different woods and it's different luthiers and things like that. And I get that. But one thing about the PRS brand is from their low models all the way up to their highest models, the quality control is amazing. So this guitar was built in Indonesia and the craftsmanship on this guitar, the, the fit and finish of this guitar is phenomenal. Now this guitar retails for around $800. I got this one for less than $600 used mint condition from a music store. It still had the tags on it, so I think it was just the demo. But in any case, less than $600, this guitar in its own right for that money is pretty amazing. But I plan on upgrading several items on this guitar to try to get closer to that USA Mark Tremonti. Now they make an SE version of the Tremonti that has a tremolo in the bridge. I really wanted the hardtail, so I went with a similar guitar that's an SE model of the 245. The main difference I think between those two is the neck is a little fatter on this one. And of course the pickups were different, but I'm changing those out. And of course the bridge was different. So I'm taking this PRS 245 and I'm going to do several upgrades to try to get it close to the Tremonti USA version. Let's take a look at the different upgrades I plan on doing. First would be the tuners. The tuners that came with this are not locking. So we're going to change these out to PRS locking tuners. Next, the nut. I'm not sure what the material is. I think it might be a sort of plastic. We're gonna change this out to a black tusk nut. Next is the fretboard. For this color guitar, which is like a dark charcoal gray, I'm not a fan of the brown fretboard, so I want to try to get the rosewood fretboard a little darker. And I've watched some videos on this on how to stain a fretboard. We're not going to get it all the way to ebony, I don't think, but it's going to look darker and I think it's going to look great. Next up is the pickups, and this is by far the most expensive part of the upgrade. I got the Mark Tremonti bridge and neck pickups, same pickup used in his USA model, and we'll be changing out the stock pickups that came in this. And then just a few other things, the knobs that are on this guitar. I got the PRS top hat knobs that come on all their core guitars. It's not going to change the sound of the guitar, but it's certainly going to change the look of it. And lastly, all my guitars, I need strap locks on them. So I got shale or strap locks to put on there. And then finally, I'll be stringing this up with Ernie Ball hybrid strings, which are the nine to 46s. And I'll be doing a complete setup uh, for intonation, string height, stuff like that. So at the end of this project, I think we're gonna be a lot closer to that USA core model. Let's be real. It's not gonna be exactly the same as that $5,000 guitar. It's not gonna have all the same wood. It's not gonna have that amazing 10 top finish that marks those high-end PRS guitars. Those things are a work of art. They're a thing of beauty. I'm not gonna get there by just changing out hardware and pickups. But in general, the feel, the playability, and the sound of this guitar should be really close. And that's the goal. I think when I'm all said and done, I'll be just over $1,000 that I'll have into this project. So let's get started 
and see how it turns out. All right, so first we're gonna tackle the tuners. So I'm going to loosen this nut. So when that's done, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna remove all these small screws and then the tuners will come right out. There we go. Okay, so here we have the PRS locking tuners. These are SE locking tuners that should just be a straight drop-in replacement for the ones I just took out. So let's drop them in. So first, I'm going to put the tuners in from the back and secure it with the screw, and then we'll flip it over and finish the job. Okay, so now all the tuners are finger tight, and I'm just going to tighten them up a little bit further with the wrench. Okay, and the last step for these PRS locking tuners is there's just a screw that goes on top. Step one is done. Okay, next in the upgrade process is going to be the nut. This is the black tusk from Graph Tech. Very good lubricated nut. That's gonna make sure the strings don't hang up. So if you've never replaced a nut on a guitar, it can be a little scary the first time. But we're basically going to remove this cover, which is the cover that allows us to get at the, uh, the truss rod to adjust the neck. We're gonna remove this cover. Then we're gonna take a blade and we're going to cut around to make sure there's no paint or shellac that's up against the nut. And then we're gonna take a block of wood and a mallet and just gently tap, and that's gonna pop right off. Okay, so here you can see the guitar with the nut removed. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the new nut and we're going to add some wood glue to the sides and to the bottom. And then we're going to use this clamp and clamp this in place right there for 30 minutes. And now we wait. Okay, so this clamp has been on here for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And as you can see, the new nut is securely in place. And of course, that's gonna really cure over the next 24 hours. But we're all set to go on the new nut. Okay, the next part of the project is going to be swapping out the pickups. So the pickups that came installed from the factory are the 245S pickups which I believe are made overseas. These pickups are going to be taken out and I'm going to install these new pickups, which are the Tremonti bridge and neck pickups that are put into his signature USA model guitars. So it's going to be a big upgrade for the pickups and let's walk through the process of getting out the old ones and putting in the new ones. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is just flip the guitar over and remove this back plate. This is now gonna give us access to where the wires come through from the pickups that connect to the potentiometers and the jack. Okay, let's flip it back over and let's take out the pickups. Okay, since I removed the four screws that are around the ring outside of the pickup, the pickup is now, it should be attached to this and should be able to lift up. 
which it does. Okay, if you can see that. So the pickup will be able to come out just like so. Okay, and as we can see here, we have this one wire coming from the neck pickup. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, and again, not a lot of slack in this wire of the pickup, that's okay. So one thing that's also very helpful when you're starting to do a pickup swap is having a wiring diagram. Now, many manufacturers do this. Paul Reed Smith, right on their website, has for every model, what is the wiring diagram to the pickups, to the potentiometers, and the jack. So super helpful. Highly recommend that you look this up and have this information when you're ready to do the pickup swap. Okay, so now we want to figure out which wire is the bridge pickup and which wire is the neck pickup. You can see the two black wires coming in here. And basically what I would do at this point, I'm just gonna show you for example, I put one screw back in here to keep these in place. So this, this pickup here, which is your bridge pickup, I'm going to pull on the wire and you see, <laughs> I think you can see the one that's moving here. This is in fact the wire for the bridge pickup. And Paul Reed Smith did a really nice job on the wire that's from the bridge pickup. They put some red heat shrink at the bottom here. And on the other pickup, which now we know is the neck pickup, they put green heat shrink at the bottom. Okay, so here's a better view. We now know that this wire with the red heat shrink on it is the bridge pickup. So if we look here, they have four wires, essentially. They have a skinny red and a skinny black that are just tied together. They have a white that goes to the potentiometer and they have the black, which is their ground, which is going to the back side of the potentiometer. Okay. If we go over and look at the pickup that we're going to be installing, as you can see here, if we look at the pickup we're going to be installing, they call the bridge pickup the treble and they call the neck pickup the base. But essentially, uh, I've always grown up calling it the bridge and neck pickups, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. Okay, so at this point we're going to take the soldering iron and we're going to remove the wires from the bridge pickup to the potentiometer. And there we go. So now what we can do is we can actually remove the bridge pickup. And it's out. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take the pickup ring off the old pickup and put it on the new pickup. And there we go. Okay, and just to be consistent, what I'm going to do is take some red heat shrink and just put it over the new pickup. So in the future, it'd be easy to identify that as the bridge pickup. I'm just going to put that on like that, add some heat, and be all set. And now we're going to do the same exact thing for the neck pickup. And also like we did before, we need to put the pickup ring from the old pickup onto the new neck pickup. Okay, so the new pickups are now mounted in. I fished the wires through. And uh, you can see we have a little plastic on here that I'll be pulling off once we're done. But if we go ahead and flip over the guitar, you can 
see down in here, it says the shrink wrap, so I know this is my bridge pickup. And then, of course, this one is the neck pickup. As you can see, this doesn't have the extra wires in it, so this uh, pickup is not able to be a split pickup, whereas this one could be a split pickup if you wanted to. But I'm not going to wire it that way. I'm just going to wire it the way it was. A lot of times people do the split pickup thing to be able to get different tones and sound more like a Strat type uh, guitar, but again, just going to wire this up the way they did. Okay, it was kind of hard to get the camera angle as I was doing some soldering, but again, I think it's all soldered up correctly now. I did have to refer to the website to understand the coloring of the new pickups. I think it was different than the old pickups but in any case i think we're good to go the true test will be when we string it up and plug it in but i think we're there so for now i am just going to button this back up okay the next step in the process is going to be changing out the volume and tone knobs with these nicer top hat knobs from PRS. Let's get going on that. And there we go. New knobs are installed. Next part of the upgrade is going to be strap locks. All of my electric guitars have strap locks on them, and I've standardized on these Schaller S locks. So that way, all of my straps and all of my guitars have these locks. They're all interchangeable. Now, I do have some guitars that have black hardware, so I went with the black chrome locks. And then, um, of course, these are going to be the silver chrome locks because a lot of the hardware here is just silver. So we're going that route. There are many kinds of strap locks out there. Personally, I, I like these, and they're... Not super expensive, but they do the trick. So there you go. Let's put them on. Okay, and the strap locks are installed. Okay, so for the final part of the project, remember we're going to try to darken up this brown rosewood neck. Maybe you won't get it to ebony, but I'd like it a little bit darker than it is right now. So to do that, we need two things. We need some acetone and we need a Minwax stain marker. So the acetone is what we're going to wipe the fretboard down with. Rosewood has some natural oils to it. And in order for the stain to adhere, we want to get some of the oils off that surface. So we're going to wipe it down with acetone first, and then, of course, we're going to do the stain marker. We'll put it on. We'll wait 10 minutes or so, wipe it off, kind of see how much darker it got, and maybe repeat that process a few more times. So here we go. Next step is going to be the stain marker. They say to shake well. So we got one fret down and about 21 to go. Okay, about 10 minutes has passed, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down. Okay, I think it's looking darker now. After two coats, I will probably do more coats, but not film all that. I definitely don't think it's going to get all the way black, like an ebony fretboard, but it's getting darker, and I really like it. Okay, so the project is done. I'm super happy with how it turned out. Let's do a quick recap on 
all the different things that I did to it and the guitar itself and really how much how much do I have into this now so this guitar is a PRS SE245 made in Indonesia it retails for around $800 I found it used online uh, from Pro Audio Star in Brooklyn for $569 now when it came it still had all the tags on it it was in brand new condition and still had all the case candy. It's not the first used guitar I bought from these guys in that shape. It's it's just amazing. $569 for the guitar. Next was the locking tuners. I think these were $97. The Graph Tech nut was about $15. The pickups. I found these actually on Amazon cheaper than other places. $161 for each of the pickups. The knobs, I think, were total about $28. And the strap locks, I think around $29. And if you remember, I, I stained the neck a little bit darker. So that Minwax stick from Lowe's was, I think, eight bucks. Altogether, I think I have about $1,060 into this. And I spent the better part of a Saturday working on it. Now, it did take me longer because I was shooting a video and stopping and making sure I had the camera set up. Um, but these upgrades were done in a day, actually probably a few hours worth of actual upgrade time. And then of course, restringing it and then, you know, doing a setup on it. So this guitar now, I just, I love how it feels. I love how it plays. I love how it sounds. It's just going to become one of my favorite guitars to play. Now I still love all my guitars with Floyd Roses on them and, but for a hardtail guitar, single cut i am so happy uh, with how this turned out so i did a couple musical samples before and after uh, so i i took uh, my sacrifice from creed in honor of mark tremonti and i played the clean and dirty parts of that before and after so let's take a quick listen and then see see if you can hear a difference see if you can tell uh, I certainly can feel a difference and hear a difference myself. Let's see if that translates to the video. So here we go. So that's it. Um, I think it sounds better. I think these pickups, at least where I'm sitting in this room, 
they sound so much better. They, they respond better. The tuning stability with the locking nut and the locking tuners and the new nut, just gonna go a long way for that tuning stability. And just the overall look, the little bit darker neck, the, the nicer top hat knobs, just really like those. And of course, all my guitars need to have strap locks. So there you go. I am super stoked to use this. I think uh, I'm gonna bring it out. We have a gig coming up this weekend. So I'm going to use it for that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear your comments on is if this is something that you would do or not. And if you think it was worth it, taking an SE guitar and doing the upgrades to it. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.